Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Hey, welcome to another filling station service. I'm your host, Pastor Matthew, and this week I'm super excited. Uh, as you just saw, we're getting ready to start a brand new series called Game Over. See, through the series, we're going to be talking about different times through the Old Testament that we see that humans kind of screwed things up, but God still had a plan. Even when it seemed like it was game over, God came up with a plan to save each and every one of us. Well, hey, we're going to go ahead and get started by having Crafty Kevin kick us off with our first craft for this series. Hey, 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 kids, Crafty Kevin here. Hey, are you ready to get started with today's craft? All right, all you're going to need is a piece of paper and some coloring materials. So today we're talking about the fall of man and when Adam and Eve sinned in the garden. But when they first were in the garden, it was a perfect place. They could have any fruit that they wanted except for from one tree. So here's what I want you to do to start off with uh, with our craft today. I want you to draw your favorite fruit. So maybe it's a strawberry or a banana or a strawberry banana smoothie with extra sugar and whipped cream on top. Oh, sorry. I got a little distracted there. Um, but draw your favorite fruit. Let's see it. All right. Here's my favorite fruit. It's a banana. I love bananas. Bananas give you so much energy and stuff. Well, today we're talking about how Adam and Eve messed up. They ate fruit that they weren't supposed to eat. Now, I think that, that the worst part of that really isn't about the fruit that they ate, but it's that they disobeyed God's commands. See, when we disobey God, it's called sin. And when we have sin in our hearts, it causes separation from us and God. And we need to listen to God's commands because he has a great and special life for each and every one of us. And the cool part is, is that even when we mess up, God sent Jesus to save us from our sins because he is our redeemer. All right, that's all I got for today. We'll see you next time. Thanks, Crafty Kevin. Hey, boys and girls, if you need time to keep working on that craft, go ahead and keep working on it as you watch the rest of this video. Hey, has anyone ever asked you what's up? Well, today we're going to teach you how you can respond to that question using a statement from today's lesson. So here is Mario to tell you what's up. Good morning, everybody. What's happening? You know what this is? This is Mario from the Mario Super Show. Yes, that's me. And today, we are, ta we are learning about the falling of man. Have you ever wanted something so bad that you couldn't resist it? One time, my brother, you know my brother, Luigi, he ordered a pizza. And you know I like a pizza just as much as he likes pizza. Well, the delivery man came to the door and he knocked on the door real loud and he delivered the pizza and so I answered it. And so then I was so surprised to see this big fat piece of pie sitting right in front of me and I hurried up and I ate it all. And before I knew it, here come Luigi downstairs and he was so mad because I ate that a bigger piece of pie. He was so mad and I ate, that I ate all of it and didn't save nothing for him. Except that I ate too much. And you know what happens when you eat too much? You... Oh, terrible! Got so sick I feel so miserable all the time. But, we're here today to not talk about that. We're here today because we're learning about Adam and Eve. You know Adam and Eve? Yes, that's right, Adam and Eve. And they messed up and they ate a forbidden fruit or fruit that was in the Garden of Eden. And they weren't supposed to. So even though they still had to face the consequences, God still promised to save them through Jesus Christ. And God has a plan to redeem all of us. So, the what's up verse today is, God is Redeemer. So I want everybody to stand to their feet, stretch high to the ceiling. Oh, yeah, so did I ate that pie. Man, that pizza was so good. Mm. And now, stretch high to the ceiling. Now put your hands down. And now I want everybody to say, God is Redeemer. Ready? God is Redeemer. All right, so now everybody can sit down. Now when everybody, somebody asks you what's up, you tell them. 
God is Redeemer. All right. I got, man, what's that smell? I smell. Luigi! Hey, that's the pizza. Give me my the pizza. Okay, guys, we'll see you later. Bye. Thanks, Mario. Hey, who can tell me what's up? That's right. God is Redeemer. What is a Redeemer? A Redeemer is someone who saves someone from something that's wrong or, or an error. So when humans mess up, um, that's called sin. When we do something against the nature of God, that's called sinning. And we need someone to save us from that. And that person is Jesus Christ. And today we're going to learn that all the way back in the book of Genesis, when Adam and Eve messed up for the first time and sin first entered the world, God gave a promise in that moment that he would send someone to redeem us. And that person was Jesus Christ. What an exciting story. I can't wait to get into it even more. But first, let's open with a quick word of prayer. Father, I ask that you would open our hearts to hear from you. God, I ask that you would help each and every one of us to understand that you are our redeemer. That when we mess up, when we make mistakes, we can turn to you and turn away from our sin and you will save us from our sins. We ask that you would be with us through this service and speak to our hearts. Amen. All right, now here's a silly story from my childhood um, that kind of relates a little bit to today's lesson. Here's silly stories with Pastor Matthew. And now it's time for Silly Stories with Pastor Matthew, the part of the show where Pastor Matthew comes out and shares a silly story. Oh, hey, how's it going? Hey, uh, well, I'm sure you're wondering what I'm doing here in the kitchen. I've got a couple spatulas here and I'm, I'm practicing. Um, have you ever seen one of those like hibachi chefs where they like flip all the food around on the grill and stuff? I've always thought that those were kind of cool, and so I wanted to see if I could do it. And, well, as you just saw, clearly I'm not very good at it. It reminds me of this one time, though, that I went to a hibachi buffet. Have you ever been to a buffet before? You know, all-you-can-eat food, and I like food. Yes, you can probably tell. Well, this one night we went there, and everything just tasted so good. I was, I was just, oh, I was in heaven. I was going up and eating food. Well, you know... I kind of overdid it a little bit. I think I went up for like four or maybe even five full plates of food. But it was so good and I was like, oh man, my stomach's full. I should probably stop. But I just kept going back up for more food because I was like, man, this is, it just tastes so good. I want it so bad. And I kept going up and eating and eating and eating. And that night when I got home, I had the worst stomach ache of my entire life. Um, and Miss Hannah actually, she was with me. And when we got home that night, um, she was sitting there and she was trying not to laugh because it was my own pain that I caused myself. But I literally just laid there all night miserable. And I was, I was in so much pain because my stomach was so full. You know, today we're talking about Adam and Eve in the garden and how when they first um, disobeyed God and they ate fruit that they weren't supposed to eat, sin entered the world. And because of that, we have pain and we have brokenness. But God had a plan to save us. Even all the way back in the book of Genesis, he told Satan that he would send a redeemer, someone to save us from our sins. Today we're going to be talking about how God is your redeemer. God can save you from the different things that you might be struggling with and how when we turn to him, we can find freedom from sin. All right, I'm going to get back to practicing on my hibachi skills. This has been Silly Stories with Pastor Matthew. Tune in next time to hear another silly story. <laughs> All right. Well, there's our silly story for today. Um, hey, we actually have a brand new guest who is going to be doing our missions minute. So check it out. How many y'all are looking for a blessing? Good morning. My name is Global Gabby. As you can see here, we got a new country we're going to learn about today. Now listen, we're going to learn about South Africa. Now, if you don't know where that is, that's in the South of Africa. Right here is the United States, United States of America. Now, if you turn the globe just a little bit, you're going to get Africa. Now, South Africa country is in the south side of Africa, right there down there at the bottom. Now, listen, i got some general facts for you today about South Africa. And here we are. Look, there's the flag right there, the flag. Or maybe it's over there. I don't know. But... This is the population. 
That means the number of people we got in Africa, we got 55.38 million people. That's a lot of people. It's a big country, so you're going to have a lot of people. Now listen, the capital, the capital city of Af South Africa is Pretoria. Now, I might say it a little different than you, but you could say Pretoria. And 86% of all those people, now they practice a, some form of Christianity. Which is great thing, great thing. But listen, there's still plenty of people who have, don't know about Jesus. And here's what we got to do. We got to pray for them peoples. We got to give. Give to BGMC so that they can help with this. And look. Your job, your job is to go tell others about Jesus. Go do it now. Y'all have a good day. We'll see you next week. All right. Now that you've seen our missions minute, hey, I want to remind you that giving to missions is so important. Um, you just learned that we should pray for our missionaries every single day. Pray for the missionaries of South Africa. We also want to keep collecting money to go into our buddy barrels um, so that we can give to our missionaries. And then the last thing that we need to do is we need to go. We need to follow missionaries' examples, and we need to go and tell others about Jesus. And that can start with your friends at home, and maybe one day God might call you into the mission field, and you can tell others about Jesus all around the world. All right. Well, hey, here it is time for our memory verse. Here's Princess Peach to give you your memory verse for today. Stand up with me, and we're going to say the memory verse. I will save you from the hands of the wicked and deliver you from the hands of the cruel. Jeremiah 15, 21. This week, we're talking about the fall of man. And when Adam and Eve first sinned, they thought everything was hopeless. But Jesus comes, and he saves us from the hands of the wicked. So, one more time, we're going to say our memory verse. I will save you from the hands of the wicked and deliver you from the hands of the cruel. Jeremiah 15, 21. Thanks, guys. I'll see you next time. Thanks, Princess Peach. Hey, let's do that memory verse one more time together. It says, I will save you from the hands of the wicked and deliver you from the grasp of the cruel. Jeremiah 15, 21. Boys and girls, this, ver this verse is talking about how God will save us from the wicked and God will save us from the cruel. Even when we mess up and we, we cause um, sin to come into our lives, God still has a plan to save us if we follow after him. Today we're learning about how Adam and Eve lived in a perfect world. Everything was great for them. You know what else can be kind of perfect sometimes? On like a really hot day, a nice can of Coke sometimes can be really, really wonderful. How many of you guys like a can of soda once in a while? Soda can be absolutely delicious. <sighs> mm, that's yummy. But how many of you guys know that sometimes soda doesn't mix the greatest of a flavor with other flavors? Um, like, for example, mint. Sometimes soda does not mix well with mint. And, you know, when Adam and Eve were in the Garden of Eden, they had the opportunity to have anything they wanted. Everything was perfect, except God gave them one rule, not to eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And you know what happened when they decided to disobey God and eat? It messed things up. Just like how you see here, it messes things up when we allow sin into our lives. And we need to trust that God has a better plan for us. And rather than mixing things into our lives that we shouldn't have in there, that cause it to overflow and spill out in a way that we don't want it to, instead we need to trust that God has a plan for each and every one of us. And when we do mess up, we need to trust that Jesus can save us and redeem us. All right, well, let's think about that as we go into this time of praise and worship today. Hi, kids. It's Computer Chloe, and I'm coming at you with some Just Praise 2020 Worship Warm Ups. I need everybody to stand up on their feet. We're going to stretch our arms out and we're just going to kind of do whatever this is. All right, and now we're going to do some kicks. Pull your knee up and kick, knee up and kick, knee up and kick, knee up and kick. All right, you are ready to worship Jesus today.
all because of you, all because of you You make me smile, you gave me a new heart, gave me a new heart You make me smile, it's all because of you, all because of you, all because of you Minecraft Bible story, we are learning about the fall of man found in Genesis 3. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was a beautiful and perfect place filled with beautiful scenery, wildlife, and plants. God also created Adam and Eve. Their job was to enjoy the perfect world and tend to the Garden of Eden. God only had one rule for them. They could not eat the fruit from the tree in the middle of the garden. This tree was called the tree of knowledge of good and evil. God told them that if they ate this fruit, they would certainly die. One day while Adam and Eve were in the garden, a serpent came to Eve. The serpent was the craftiest animal in the garden. He asked Eve a trick question. He asked, surely God did not say you cannot eat the fruit from any tree in the garden. Eve responded and told him he was wrong. She told the serpent that they could eat from any tree in the garden except for the tree of knowledge of good and evil in the middle of the garden. She told him that if they ate this fruit, they would die. The serpent told Eve, you will not die if you eat this fruit. Instead, you will be like God, knowing good and evil. Eve saw that the fruit looked good, and she decided to eat some. After she ate some, she gave some to Adam. Immediately, they both realized they had disobeyed God and had sinned. They decided to hide from God. When God found them, they explained what happened. That is when God cursed the serpent and told him that one day he would send someone to redeem mankind. That person was Jesus. Even at the beginning of time, God came up with a plan for Jesus to come and save us. That's because God is Redeemer. 
Today we're talking about how God is our redeemer. But what is a redeemer though? A redeemer is someone who saves someone from error or something wrong. Did you know that at one point the world used to be a perfect place? It really was. There was no pain, no brokenness, no labor. Life was good. The Bible talks about it all in the beginning of Genesis. Adam and Eve lived in the Garden of Eden, and boy, did they have it good. They could have anything they wanted. God had built everything on the earth just for them, um, and it was just for them to enjoy. They got to go around and name animals. They got to eat whatever fruit they wanted. It was amazing. God only had one rule for them. He told them that they could not eat fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. He said, there's a tree in the middle of the garden. Don't eat that fruit. And, and you know, that's probably a pretty easy rule to follow. When they have everything that they could ever want, you'd think it'd be pretty easy to follow that. Well, it seems easy enough, but even though they had everything they wanted, let's take a look at what happened in Genesis chapter 3, verse 1. It says, Now the serpent was more crafty than any of the wild animals the Lord had made. He said to the woman, Did God really say that you must not eat from any tree in the garden? Well, no, God didn't say that. So the woman said to the serpent, We may eat fruit from the trees in the garden, but God did say you must not eat fruit from the tree that is in the middle of the garden. He said that you must not even touch it or you will die. The serpent looked at the woman, and the serpent said, You will not certainly die, the serpent said to the woman. For God knows that when you eat from it, your eyes will be open, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So the serpent was tempting Eve. He was saying, You know, you could try that fruit. It doesn't matter what God said. God just, he doesn't want you to be like him. He doesn't want you to see good and evil. Um, he wants you to, to go without that knowledge. And so here's what happened. It says that she saw the fruit and she saw that it, it looked pretty good. It looked pretty pleasing to the eye. See, they only had one rule, and that was to not eat this one fruit. They could have anything else they wanted. I'm sure there was plenty of other tasty fruits. But do you know what happened? Eve went and she took that fruit and she took a bite. And then she took some and she gave it to her husband, Adam. And Adam took a bite of that fruit too. And at that point, sin had entered into the world for the first time. That was the first time that humankind had disobeyed God and they had done something against the nature of God. And at that point, their eyes were open to sin. And they realized that there was evil and brokenness. You see, boys and girls, after they ate the fruit, they felt ashamed. Have you ever done something really bad before and uh, afterwards you, you felt just terrible? Uh, maybe you went and hid or something? Well, that's exactly what Adam and Eve did. They went and they hid from God. And God came down into the garden. He was searching for them, cry, crying out to them, saying, Adam, Eve, where are you? And finally Adam responded and said, we ate the fruit from the tree that you told us not to. And because of that, we were scared, so we hid. At this point, God, God was probably pretty sad, probably pretty disappointed that, that he had given them everything that they could ever want. And he just asked them to follow this one rule, and they didn't. He realized that they needed saved, that, that they couldn't overcome their sinful nature, and that they needed someone to save them. So here's what God said in chapter 3, verse 14, because he asked them, Why did you eat this fruit? And Eve said, It was because the serpent told us to. And so the Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed are you above all livestock and all wild animals. You will crawl on your belly and you will eat dust all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and hers. He will crush your head and you will strike his heel. See, boys and girls, right there was the first promise that God gave us of a Savior. God saw that we needed redeemed, that, that we couldn't do it on our own. So God promised that one day through the family line of Adam and Eve, that Jesus would come and Jesus would destroy Satan. And he would be able to give us freedom from our sins. See, now that didn't take away the consequences of the sins. After that, he turned and he told Adam and Eve that they're going to have pain in life now. That they're going to have labor, they're going to have turmoil. And that's all because they chose to sin and disobey against God. So I want to ask you this morning. 
do you have sin in your life? Have you chosen to do things that God has asked you not to do? See, because if so, then you're in the same boat that I am. See, boys and girls, I, I sin, I mess up every single day. And that's why it's so important to know that God is our redeemer. God came to save each and every one of us through his son, Jesus Christ. And so I want to ask you this morning, if you say, Pastor Matthew, I mess up sometimes and, and I have sin in my life and I haven't asked God to forgive me of that. If that's you, then the Bible says that we need to repent and we will be saved. Now, repentance isn't just a, hey, God, will you forgive me? Repentance means that you actually turn away from your sins. You leave your sins in the past. You leave them behind. And once you do, you can live freely with Jesus. So if you say this morning that that's me, that I have sin in my life, whether it's that you struggle with lying, whether you struggle with cheating or stealing, whatever it may be, God can set you free from that this morning and he can redeem you of those sins. He can help you fix those areas of your life. So if that's you, I just want you to pray and ask God to forgive you as we sing this song together. Let's go ahead and praise. Father, I thank you. God, I thank you that you're our redeemer. That no matter how many times we mess up, no matter how many mistakes we make, we can turn to you and ask for forgiveness. I thank you that from all the way back in the book of Genesis, we can see that you set up this plan to have Jesus come and save us from our sins. Help us to turn from our sins and to live a holy life that chases after you. We ask that in your holy name. Amen. What an amazing service that we've had today. Hey, boys and girls, thank you for tuning in. Um, I am super excited about the rest of this series so we can learn how when things seem like it's game over, God has a plan to save us. Thanks for tuning in today.